Hey Simonix, what's up? Welcome back to a quick, quick win on the Android build. Over the last time I noticed that there's a new format called a bundle that we can upload to Android instead of an APK. Um, and I also got a lot of questions about how to generate this with Cordova or also with Capacitor. So today we will look at exactly this issue of how to create a bundle build from your Ionic application for both Capacitor and Cordova. We will also make this kind of automatic for Capacitor and that's also the reason we kind of love by now Capacitor. And we will of course just use an existing application so not really any other coding. Let's do this. Um, to give you a quick introduction, the Android bundle build is basically a format to deliver your applications to the Android Play Store. And when a user downloads uh, your application, Android will uh, deliver exactly an optimized APK for that user. If you're using native Android, um, you can also get kind of freaky with this and have like a base module and other feature modules that are not downloaded immediately, but only later after the user really requests them or different asset packs. Uh, I don't really know if or how we can uh, use this with Ionic. I will research this a bit more since it looks kind of interesting. But anyway, um, since uh, the Android upload now allows this format, uh, I feel like in the future we might see a complete shift to this new format and actually no APKs anymore. And therefore I want to prepare you to use this new format. So um, as a little uh, pre-condition, uh, you need to generate a signing key first. Perhaps you already got that one. Uh, if not, you can simply go ahead and generate one using the key tool file. Uh, I will order this a bit different because you could actually leave out this part and then the uh, command line would ask you about the password for the store and the alias and another password. Um, but if you want to make this completely automatic uh, and you're a bit lazy, you can simply pass the store password, the alias, the key password and the other information that you might supply. Of course, pick your own passwords, make it safe and keep that store file somewhere and also the passwords because you need this file, the this key store file, whenever you want to update your application in the future on Android. So really um, put it somewhere safe and don't lose it. All right, I already created that key file uh, using exactly this password and we will see this at a later point again. So let's start with Cordova. Uh, we're in my Capacitor project. Here's my Cordova project. Uh, thanks for not snapping my tools like usual. So for Cordova, uh, it's actually kind of simple because the only thing we need to run is this command. Ionic Cordova build prod uh, Android release. So that's generating the regular APK. And if you add <laughs> this little addition, <laughs> with kind of a lot of dashes, but trust me, it is right exactly like this. I'm not completely sure why, but it, there will be a reason why. Um, this will generate a bundle build. And the bundle build is, as I said, a bit different. It has the extension AAB, I think. AAB, yeah, I think so. Um, but it will still be inside your Cordova project. And once this bundle file is built, it is basically like an APK that you still need to sign before you can actually upload it to Google. And to sign this file, you can run another command, uh, which looks like this should we maybe we should just open a new window because the commands get kind of long for this. I will just bring it to a new line. So we will use the jar signer. Um, a lot of interesting stuff going on to sign using your key store file. So that's the pass, but if you use it at the root of your Ionic project, that should be fine. Then the path to the bundle file and finally the alias of your key. And we can confirm this by checking the build output from the bundle build. Uh, build the following bundles to a path Android app build outputs bundle release app AAB. So if I would go ahead and run this command, I would have to insert my super safe password and then it would be signed and I could now upload it. 
So for Android, this works kind of great, um, but for Capacitor, we can actually do this as well, um, also in a perfectly fine way. So let's head over to the Capacitor project. And within Capacitor, you might know that Capacitor is not really any build like uh, what we use with Cordova. So Capacitor relies on the native tools and we can use them within our project. So usually you would uh, do something like this. So we would execute the Ionic build, um, I think with dash dash release, then you might uh, npx cap at Android or sync Android if it's already added. And then you can go ahead with npx cap open Android, which would open Android Studio. Actually, let's do this npx open Android within, yeah, uh, npx cap open Android Studio. Um, within Android Studio, you could actually perform the same thing. Uh, I think you can also do this in Cordova uh, project and also in Capacitor project, but I don't really like this approach since it requires you to open Android Studio to fill in some fields. Um, and in general, it just doesn't feel right to me to build it. I know for Xcode, for iOS, we have to do this approach, um, but I feel that works kind of a bit better. So from Android Studio, you could actually go to build from the top menu and then uh, select generate sign bundle APK, Android app bundle next uh, module. I think that's fine. Uh, yeah, now I would have to update uh, a Gradle, then other things would happen. Then I would have to specify my key file and a lot of dialogues I would have to go through, but it could actually be a lot easier. We can simply CD into the Android folder, which is basically a, a native Android um, project. And we can use a cool tool called Gradle, uh, which is or should be known to any uh, Android developer. Now within here, we can first of all run tasks if you want to, to check out what we could actually do. And if you see this list, there's actually a lot that we could run with Gradle. And the thing that we want to run is bundle, assembled a bundle. So let's run Gradle bundle. And that's basically it. That's now the same like uh, Cordova did before. Uh, we see a build success. Uh, let's quickly open this and within app build outputs bundle release we find our app release and just like before you can run uh, the same commands now to uh, sign this bundle only the path is a slightly different at the end it's not only app.aib but app release aib but we would still have to sign this manually with this uh, jar signer now the interesting thing is if you want to completely automate this, you can definitely do this. And I will show you how. First of all, we generate, we, hello, uh, I want to do a new file. And let's call this one, I think, key store properties. So within here, we would have a plain text password like the store password, the key password, the key alias, and the path to the file. Hold on uh, if you want to talk about this. Key store uh, with this password should be in the git ignore, so you shouldn't really commit this to your GitHub repository, unless you're perhaps working on a private repository just for your own and you think it's really safe to commit these passwords. Otherwise, uh, don't do this. Put it onto, uh, into your git ignore or use it like an environment file with a dot. I think that might work as well. So really be careful. Now about this path, I uh, usually would think, uh, think the release is right next to the key store, but the key store properties file is actually used within Android app. So when the application or the Android build checks that file, it will be inside that folder. And from there, the path to the store file is actually going two levels up and then finding the release key store file. So keep that in mind uh, for our build. Now, this is uh, the first step. And the second step is in, uh, to go into Android app build, uh, no, build.gradle. And within here, we will first of all load our key store file. 
And you might now scream, okay, why do we only got one level up in here? Because we're now technically at the root project when this is executed. So from if you think you are the root project, <laughs> then you are at this level. And from this level, it's just going up one level anymore to find our properties file. So you must think like the computer to understand it. And then we can load this file into a new properties file. I'm actually not a native Android expert, but trust me, this kind of works. Now, from this, we can, of course, extract our information and generate a little signing config here in our Android block using all the information from our keystore properties file. And with that information, we can simply uh, add a little block to the release build type and say, please, for the signing config, use our signing config dot release. As a result, we can go once again into the Android folder and now run Gradle bundle release. And when we run this, um, our information from the key stuff file will be used to completely uh, sign our bundle file and we could immediately upload it. So that means um, you could deploy this into your uh, CI environment, your Jenkins or whatever you got. And with Capacitor, you still have an automatic build using the native tools for Android. You could also use Fastlane or perhaps there are now already other tools to ship your um, bundle file to Android Play Store. So then you would have a complete chain uh, for building your application. Now, one more thing I wanted to show you, and that is using the bundle tool. Because we're generating bundles, uh, there's a bundle tool. If you don't know how to install it, just Google how do I install bundle tool. And for Mac, I use Brew to install the bundle tool. Um, that's pretty easy. Uh, for Windows, um, I guess there's a different way, but it should be basically the same. Now, I will connect all of this because I know that if I got it like before, it wouldn't be executed. What this bundle tool does, for example, right now, if I connect my Android device to my computer, um, yeah, hello. Um, it will build APKs from the bundle because normally the bundle file uh, is deployed and then Android will deliver the right information to the device. And if you want to test it, you can pass the flag dash dash connected device. Here's the connected device. Then the bundle file, as you can see right here, then an output folder into which the uh, this not APK, but APKS uh, folder will generate it. And then once again, the information about your key store file. So the key store, the password, the alias, and another time, or once again, the password. So let's do this and file release J. Yeah, that's exactly, <laughs> I encountered this before. I'm in the wrong directory. So now I need to go back to my uh, root directory of our uh, capacitor application, and I can run this. So this would now generate a folder APKs and we see my app APKs. And with the second command, I could now directly install this to my connected device and I would have the bundle for testing on my device, which is pretty great. Now, if you want to still distribute an APK and want to uh, get rid of all the features that a bundle should bring, uh, you can simply remove connected device and we keep this to build APKs and we will add the addition or actually we can also do it right here, I think, and set the mode to universal. Let's run this again. Come on. Uh, yeah, already exists. Uh, just delete it. Come on. Um, this means build uh, APK S file from the bundle um, for basically all devices and every include everything. So that means the bundle or the APK will be bigger once again, but as a little benefit, we can take a look at our folder and I've done this before. So what you can do is you can simply rename it to a zip file. You can unzip it and in there you will find the universal APK that you could now distribute. Or what I also wanted to show you is uh, 
inspect in two different ways because I'm always suspicious what's inside my APK if I use the right keys or anything. So you can go ahead with, for example, let's use the full size here with AAPT, dump, badging, and then the path to your own evasal APK. And then you would find a lot of interesting information like the bundle ID, version codes, the permissions used in that application and more. And also, if you're curious about the fingerprint or the certificates included, you can go ahead with the key tool. Uh, once again, path to your APK and then you would find the fingerprint in there as well. So I hope you enjoyed this quick win on the bundle build for Android. It is possible with both Cordova and Capacitor. I actually enjoy Capacitor a bit more since for the native tooling, you will also always find a lot of information online because there are a lot of native developers. And if any of the tools used, just sign up, bundle tool, whatever we've used isn't installed on your local machine, just check it out on Google uh, installer. It's always different for Mac and Windows, so I don't want to show it for each and every tool, but you will definitely notice if something is missing on your machine. And then I hope this helps to integrate the bundle build into your uh, chain of tools, perhaps use it in your CI environment or just uh, speed up if you want to update your application the next time. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your apps faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding. Simon.